Okay, so as you're aware, some of you may well have already received some information via email from myself about our upcoming eye contact exhibition. And Penny has quite kindly agreed to be one of our guest speakers and will be speaking in the afternoon on the Wednesday, the 28th of September at St. Mary's Stadium in Southampton and she's speaking at 12 uh, sorry 2.15 following and Professor Angelo Tree and um, Penny's then going to be talking about her prize winning adventure as uh, professional chefs and home cooks that she met along the way and having survived her near death accident Penny is back in Hampshire running the open site monthly online cooking session so it's a way for you to have um so ask good questions time with Penny. Um, Penny's also going to demonstrate some of the equipment that she uses that she has found on mainstream shops rather than the specialist shops because we do know that the equipment can be quite expensive. So, yes, yeah, so thank you, Penny, for supporting the event. We're really looking forward to it. And it'd be a chance for you guys, if you can make the event, to meet Penny in person instead of on the screen. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Well. Yep. It would be lovely be to good. see you, and I'll bring some bits of kit so you can feel them <clears throat> and take a view as to whether they might be useful for you. And you can come and tell us about your bits of kit that are really useful. So we can sort of have a swap information session. Hmm. Sounds good. Okay. We've got two Mediterranean recipes for you today. They are both pretty easy. Um, so, you know, because it's too hot to make too much. Do they involve courgettes? <laughs> Pardon? Do they involve courgettes? We've got Not necessarily. <laughs> Are we going to mount it off them? Oh, well, there you go then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if, you know, if you hate courgettes, don't use them. If you love them, use masses of them. <laughs> so, I'm going to start off with a ratatouille. And I've got here a pan, but I've got some oil gently heating. And into that, I'm just going to turn the oil up. When I was in Italy learning to cook there, they were saying that they always start with a cold pan, cold oil. So there's no mm -hmm. little, um, issue about um, heating up the oil and then putting things in, which, of course, makes it splash if you're not very accurate about doing it because you can't see. Now, I'm making so this ratatouille. So Alan's adjusting us. You done? Yes. <clears throat> right. You won't be able to see this, but on here I've got um, my mobile little um, hob. On there is a big pan. Now, this is actually a saute pan, so it's very wide, which is ideal for something like this. And it's about, just measuring my, it's about two, three inches deep. So it's quite a nice, large, deep pan. Gives me lots of surface area. And into this, I have put the onion and garlic. And I've also got quite a generous amount of olive oil because there's quite a lot of cooking to be done here. I've got loads and loads of vegetables. Um, when you're making a ratatouille, there are all sorts of ways of making it. And... In, in reality, we need to just think about it as sautéed summer vegetables. I am making it today because I'm going to serve it with a pasta sauce, with pasta. So it's going to make quite a good chunky sauce to go with pasta. Um, and so I've cut all my vegetables quite small. If you think about a centimetre cube square, that sort of size, um, that's got the benefits that it's not going to take too long to cook. And it's also going to be easier to eat. Um, and so you might have it with, you know, a shell pasta. So the bits can get inside the shells. Um, and it makes a lovely, a lovely meal. The other thing that this ratatouille does is it freezes really well. So I'll make this up. We might have some for lunch today. I will box the rest in my blessed Lakeland boxes and um, pop it in the freezer. And then it can just come out, defrost, and get reheated in the microwave um, with more pasta. 
or I might serve it for supper with some nice bread to do a light lunch. So it's a, it's a really flexible recipe. I think the other thing I would say is I'm making this small today, cut, cutting it, the vegetables small. If you like your courgettes or you like your peppers, there is no reason why you shouldn't make this with much larger pieces, you know, an inch square, something like that, so that you, you have a distinctive vegetable bite with every mouthful, so that you're eating a piece of courgette, you're eating a piece of pepper. With this one that I'm making, you're going to get a medley of vegetables. So this is starting to smell good. And actually, I, I cannot tell you how easy this is. I'm going to throw in, I've got a very large um, box here. I wonder what's in here. And I've got so much stuff. Yeah. Ah, here's my peppers. I've got a red pepper that's going in. I've, I've been really well prepared and chopped everything up beforehand. That's a red pepper in, and that's going to saute as well. I'm just going to turn the heat up a bit. And I'm using a nice olive oil, an extra virgin olive oil, which I don't very often use to cook with because extra virgin olive oil tends to burn very much more easily than common or garden um, subsequent presses of the olive oil. So I'm keeping the temperature not scorching hot. Can you hear how hot it is? Can you hear that cooking? No. <laughs> it's just a little, not a, pss, 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 pss. You follow me. <laughs> this, this is me doing ventriloquism for <laughs> prime vegetables. Multi-talented. Yeah. Love it, don't you? <laughs> and why not? So, I, you know, how, how simple is this? I thought um, to have some summer flavours, particularly if you've got lots of vegetables in the garden. We've got masses of tomatoes coming. Um, we've got lots of cucumbers. We actually didn't grow courgettes this year because... Um, they, they took up a lot of space, we found, and actually we eat the cucumbers more. Now, I've got a recipe with the cucumbers in a minute. So, there's, I'm now going to put in, I've got this big box here of masses of courgettes. <laughs> which I, I love courgettes. Lots of courgettes, but I've also got um, aubergine. Now, this has got a couple of aubergine just chopped up. We're going to push those in. Just going to move the mix over to one side so the aubergines can get a chance to see the see the bottom of the pan. I'm just stirring my vegetables around in this pan. I'm trying not to get it too hot. I don't want things to burn. They are just sauteing. So that's gone in there. I've got peppers. I've got aubergines. Courgettes. You could make this with just, you know, ignore the cor the aubergines. Just make it with lots of courgettes. Um, so, uh, what have I got left? Now, I said to you that I'm going to make this to go with pasta, and I'm actually, and it sounds very odd, going to use a tin of tomatoes. That's because our tomatoes are not yet abundant enough or ripe enough to be used in this recipe. And I, do you know the chef Rick Stein? Oh, yes. Now, Rick Stein always says that, you know, if you don't have the right sort of tomatoes for this sort of dish or others, use tin tomatoes, because tin tomatoes are tinned at their very ripest. So there goes in, and you're, you might hear the note changing. So in there, I've put a large tin of tomatoes. And this is one of those dishes that you can use as much or as little of any ingredient as pleases you. So if you don't like aubergines, leave them out. If you don't like peppers, leave them out. And you can hear the tomatoes going in. I'm just, this is me scraping out the tin because I'm so mean, I want every drip of it. Okay. 
Right. And can you hear it? Not now, but I did just now. There is just a blah, 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 blah. Okay. I can hear it. Maybe. I think, I don't know if I'm just imagining it, but I can hear something. Yes. It could just be me. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, you notice I haven't put any salt and pepper in it. What I've got here is a little teaspoonful of ground black pepper. And we have some ground black pepper, which is amazingly hot. Um, so I have to be quite restrained with it. So um, I'm going to pop that over there. I haven't put any salt into this because um, I am going to put in some olives. And here are black olives. Now, do you remember I said I cut this quite small because I want to use it as a pasta sauce? So these black olives, I've sort of halved or quartered so that they are a comparable size with the rest of the ingredients. And as they're quite salty, I haven't put any more salt in at the moment. And I'm just going to stir those through. And so if you're using olives, just check the saltiness at the end. Don't add any more salt in the short term. So that's a gloopy globally mess so penny i don't like olives so if i was to keep that out of the recipe would you suggest putting a little bit of uh, salt in yes but i would still wait until you've got a bit further on you know what we're okay, going to do thanks. is probably let this uh, just gloop away for 20 minutes half an hour you know you don't want your vegetables getting over soft you know that they need to be edible go between your teeth nicely, but you don't want a mush, if you follow me. Right, I've got here, um, oh, right, this is my uh, chorizo. Now, you, I, I just happen to have, and this is the cooking type of chorizo, not the, the sort of slicing delicatessen type of chorizo. So I'm just going to put this in. If you don't like chorizo, if you don't want to have meat, don't bother. Um, if you want something else, you could make little tiny balls of perhaps sausage meat. And I'm putting it in at this stage after the tomatoes, because actually I don't really want the chorizo to be, you know, I could have fried it earlier and it would have been a bit crispy and all the rest of it. With this, I just want it really to break down. And a big thing of chorizo is uh, it's often got quite a lot of smoked paprika in it. So, I'm going to be changing the flavour of this from a classic Mediterranean uh, ratatouille by adding the chorizo. But it's going to hopefully make it all the more interesting with some pasta. And I've cut these pieces, ooh, probably quarter of an inch, half a centimetre pieces, just quite small because I want it. And now my last box, so I've got some herbs. And again, it's what herbs have you got? Um, you could use mint. I'd be quite cautious with mint. I'm going to be using Mediterranean vegetables. Uh, sorry, Mediterranean herbs. So I've got very finely chopped pars parsley, thyme, rosemary, a bit of sage. Um, you could use oregano. Ta um, tarragon, again, is quite a distinctive flavour probably a bit heavy for this. So, how's that? Is that smelling? You can't smell it. <laughs> we need smelling. It's smelling <laughs> wonderful here. Yeah, but it does look, it looks gorgeous. I'd be more than happy to come around for a bite of lunch with you yeah. this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I'm just going to walk, let that sit there and simmer. I'm going to turn the pan handle around so it's safe and I don't do it. And now uh, I have another one of those recipes that is so embarrassingly easy, I'm nearly ashamed to show you. Do you remember we made the orange ice cream a few weeks ago? A few months ago? No? No, I, I, I wasn't on that, that session, so yeah. Well, the orange so ice cream was, uh, I think it's about 390 odd grams of condensed milk a 300 milliliter tub of double cream, 
Um, the the orange, it was a zest of, I think, two oranges and a slug of Cointreau. Um, I thought I, I was trying to make some space in the freezer. So I thought I'd try raspberry because I had some frozen raspberries. So I put what, probably three handfuls, big handfuls of raspberries into a bowl, um, frozen still, poured on the condensed milk, poured on the cream. And I happened to have some eau de framboise liqueur. So I put a slug of that in, got my hand, my um, stick blender, blended it till it was smooth. And it was already starting to thicken up because, of course, the effect of the cold raspberries on the co condensed milk was um, stiffening it. Mm. Popped it in the freezer. Delicious. And Penny, this is Supri. I was on mute when you asked. Yes, I made the ice cream. Yes. Um, and it went down really well. So we'll do it again. I think you could try it with um, frozen. You, I'm, I'm a real fan of having quite acidic fruits, orange, mm. lemon, raspberry, um, is something that is going to cut through the sweetness that you have from the condensed milk. You could be seasonal, couldn't you? You could make it several times a year, depending oh, on yes. the well, well, we, 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 we now have boxes in the freezer, raspberry, orange, rum and raisin, coffee and mm. walnut. Oh. So there's lots of delicious flavours there. Right, I am going to let that pan just bubble away and I am going to show you a cold summer soup now Susie had sent me a recipe this morning can you see me over here yeah yes well you can't but you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> um, Susie sent me a recipe this morning but that was a cooked soup this is a cold soup and I served this for a lunch party um, the other day and this is, these are, the, these are the cucumbers we grow. So I'm showing you something which is actually about the size of a courgette, a, a, a thick courgette. It's about over six inches long. It's about over an inch, inch and a half wide. And that's what I've used for this soup. These are the cucumbers. Um, but you could, obviously you could buy, use um, cucumbers from the shop. And what I've got in here is an ice cream box, which has just come out of the fridge. And this is the important bit. So in this ice cream box, I've got the equivalent of a whole cucumber. And for this, I actually peeled it, which is not really for me and not necessary for you, if you can't see. But I'm taking the green colour off the cucumber so that, I, that this soup will end up being quite pink. Um, I've got a red pepper. I've got um, a kilo of tomatoes. These, I confess, were shop-bought tomatoes. Um, but the spring onion um, and um, some garlic, oil and vinegar. And I use sherry vinegar. Um, and all of this was roughly chopped yesterday. And that's part of it. Put in this box with salt and pepper two grams of salt, four grams of pepper. And I just stirred it around with, uh, you, you might use breadcrumbs. Actually, we had some old dried up bits of bread and I just measured the right amount, threw them in. And of course they've all collapsed and dissolved in the liquid. And that's what you're trying to do is draw the liquid out of your vegetables. So here I've got my blender. And I have somewhere here, yes, my ladle. So I'm just going to ladle some of this into my blender. One. Two. These are big uh, silicon ladles for. I like silicon. We just bought some silicon tipped tongs because it means it does less damage to my... Um, cookware. I can, can you hear it bubbling? No. No, it, it is. It's, it, it's a quite, a, quite a simmer. So I'm trying to turn it down. Again, I don't want those vegetables breaking down. I want them to be end up as distinct little chunks. 
Right. So blender, half of the mix in, lid on. You will remember the trick about a blender. Make sure your hand is on top so the lid doesn't pop off and you get blender contents all over the kitchen. <laughs> Did I tell you it was embarrassingly easy? Yes. So that was half the mix. I'm now going to pour the rest of the mix. So I'm putting in the rest of the veg. The reason I'm doing it in two halves is just slightly more manageable. And in fact, I've got so much, I may not get it all into here. Oh, yes. I'm just going to give it another go and then we'll put the rest in. <coughs> Right, last lot, I'm going, to get, I'm going to check the texture because what you're expecting from this is a smooth texture, um, like an ordinary soup, because, and, and a certain degree of thickness, if I say it like that, because, of course, what you're going to do is you're pulverizing the um, breadcrumbs into the soup and they're using, they're your thickening agent. If you wanted something that was much, much lighter, you could leave, excuse me, that was me sucking my fingers. You could leave out the um, red crumbs. But I think this is a good consistency. This is a good level of ingredients. Yeah. it as a spoon. and see what I think of this texture now. So I'm looking for something. Mm. That is absolutely delicious. It's light and fresh, but it's got body and flavor. And what I will do with this now is I'm going to leave it in the blender jug. Um, I can, um, I'll put it back in the fridge that will serve, I think that makes about 1.6 or more litres. So it's quite a lot of soup um, with some very simple ingredients. Um, I would serve it for as a summer lunch in um, a cup or a bowl um, with some nice homemade bread. I served it, as I said, with as a starter for a lunch the other week. Um, we had gazpacho soup and homemade bread followed by chicken, um, coronation chicken, and homemade pork pies. And some of, some of you may remember that we made pork pies together way, way, way long ago. You, and you, got that out there, you don't realise, do you, how, how many different recipes we've done online? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, what an achievement um, that would be, guys. What I'll do this week is I'll blog um, the planning for that party and the links to all the recipes, because they're all dead simple. And they, they, what happens is, because you can make them all beforehand, you know, and some of them I would start making two, three days beforehand, and they will keep in the fridge. So chocolate mousse, I made two days beforehand. Um, the strawberries cordon bleu, I made the day beforehand. Um, the salads, I got started a couple of days beforehand. And so by doing just a bit of work, a couple of hours each day, it really makes it very manageable. So here I've got my ratatouille still going. I'm just going to give it a stir. And really, I want to see. All right. That was a piece of aubergine I've just fished out and eaten. I would say it's not quite done, but it's not bad. I'm going to just give it a, probably another 10 minutes or so. And then call it a day, let it cool. And actually letting some of these flavours sort of cool and settle into each other is really very useful. If you have it too instantly, you've got too many distinct flavours not actually melding together in a ratatouille. 
On the other hand, some people would say you cook the onions separately, the tomatoes separately, the peppers and all the rest of it. So you bring them together at the end. Um, and so you're really tasting each of their separate flavors. So it depends entirely on what you're trying to achieve with this sort of dish. This would be a fabulous pasta sauce. Do well, I, Penny, have... I have a question. Yeah. Um, the one time I did try to cook aubergine, I yeah. got it so wrong and it just was, it just tasted so bitter. What did I do wrong? I, and um, my husband, when I say aubergines in the uh, recipe, he says, don't put aubergine in because I, I, I totally got it wrong. What did I do wrong? I, I have no idea. Um, I think that there used to be all sorts of things about salting aubergines. and all Yeah, that. salt aubergines, but these days the varieties that come, you don't need to do that. Um, before you had to put that uh, salt in, in a bowl, yes. leave it for half an hour, 40 minutes, then drain it all off, then cook it. So it gets the bitterness out. Yes. Um, I heard somewhere you don't need, I don't do it now. No, I, I don't. I have done it for years. Um, we cook a lot of aubergine in Indian dishes yes, various dishes we so. don't we don't salt them no, no. not oh, anymore okay I'll, I'll give it another go and just not mention that it's got aubergine in just <laughs> <laughs> yeah it depends on your bit fry it with the with the oil um that's usually very nice although it's not the healthiest no aubergines are a bit like sponges and they will take mm, they will yeah but it do does taste nicer the more oil it's got the nicer it tastes <laughs> <laughs> like most things super like most yeah things. exactly fry, if in doubt fry it <laughs> with, with the baba ganoush i can't remember the exact recipe but you are putting your aubergine on a hot barbecue and charring the skin and then you take it away stuff it in a plastic bag where it sweats just as you would with a pepper and then you can when it's cooler you can take off all the charred skin and then you would with the softened and it's got a really distinctive smoky flavor by then aubergine with a bit of garlic mm, and nice. oil. it is delicious really one of my favorite sort of dip dishes um you know how you get hummus um, those sorts of things mm. lots of, um guacamole the, uh, baba ganoush is, is is a great favorite of mine it's all very interesting thank you very much mm. indeed well, I hope you'll come and see me at this, I think it's the 28th of September. Yes. At the Stadium. Yes, we are about to go. A quarter of an hour. So I'll talk a bit about um, what I do on that world travel. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be very interested if I go take some books along. And I don't know how much sight you have. Quite a lot of people with visual impairment have been able to read it because the text is so clear it's so well spaced yeah. so i you know for my purposes i'd be really interested to know whether you can actually see the text um and i'll bring along just some bits i'm not going to cut loads and loads but i'll just bring along some bits to show you and if you've got anything that you want to tell me about or share with others let's have it as a sort of discussion if you can come we will see you in september and i don't Magda, do you know what date in the second Monday in September is? It's 12th September. For the fruit frangipan tart. And again on the 28th for a bit of a talk and a bit of a natter. Look forward to that. Okay. 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 We'll to another great baking exclusive session with Penny Malval Brown, hosted by Open Site Hampshire. When I started this today, I had a clean apron. <laughs> <laughs> it looks clear to us. <laughs> Our baking sessions take place every second Monday of the month via Zoom. Our baking sessions are for anyone who is visually impaired or blind who would like to come along and learn new ideas and share their tips and interact with other visually impaired people. To find out more about our regular baking sessions, please contact Open Site Hampshire 
on 02380641244 or email info at opensite.org.uk. You can also register on our event bright page. And please don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms.